Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm Paul, I'm with the Dicey Review, and today we're going to be learning how to play the two to five player trick-taking card game, Scout, being released by Oink Games. Scout comes with all of the components that you see here, including 45 cards, 23 scout chips, 5 scout and show markers, a start player marker, and 30 double-sided score tokens. To begin setup, you may have to remove some cards. In a three-player game, we're going to remove all of the cards that show a number 10 on them. The remaining cards will be the deck that's used during the game. Then give each player a scout and show marker, place the scout chips and the score chips near the play area, and randomly determine a start player that will receive the start player marker. Then shuffle all the cards and deal each player an equal pile. In a three player game, each player will receive 12 cards. At the start of each round, players will look at their hand of cards. Each card has a number on the top and the bottom. Players get to decide at the start of the round and only at the start of each round if they would like to use their hand of cards facing in this direction or facing in this direction. Once players have decided how they want their hand to be played, they can't move, shift, or alter their hand in any way. They can't shift cards to different spots in their hand. It has to remain in this exact same order. A game of Scout will last a number of rounds depending on the player count. Players will play rounds equal to the number of players, and each round, beginning with the start player, players have a choice of one of three actions. They can either take a show action, a scout action, or a scout and show action. When a player takes a show action, that means that they play cards from their hand into the middle of the table to try and beat other cards and claim those cards for victory points at the end of each round. If there's no active set that's currently in the middle of the table, like there will be in the start of a round, players can either play a single card or multiple cards. So for instance, this player could choose, if they wanted to, to play this eight in the middle of the table. That eight would now be the active set and other players would have a chance to beat that active set by playing cards from their hand. It's important to note that by playing that particular card, this person has created a new pair of cards in their hand that they can play on a future turn. Playing cards in a specific way or in a specific order to create better combinations in your hand is a big part of the strategy in this game. Once there's an active set of either a single card or multiple cards in the middle of the table, players can beat that active set by playing cards from their hand. If there's a single card in the table, that card could be beaten by playing another single card of a higher value. For instance, this 9 would beat this 8. Anytime an active set is beaten by playing a card like this, the owner who played that new card would claim the current active set in their play area and turn it face down. This card would be scored as points for that player at the end of the round. In addition to playing a single card of a higher value, a player could also play a consecutive run of cards or a set of identical cards of a greater number than the card on the table. So for instance, even if players played a consecutive run of cards with lower numbers like this four or five, since there are more cards in this run than is currently in the active set, this would allow the player to claim this card just as if they'd played a higher card value of a single card. Players could also beat this active card by playing a set of equal numbers, even if they have a lower value. This identical set contains two cards, which would beat this card as well. Once there are multiple cards in a consecutive run as an active set, a player could beat that active set by either playing a run of a higher value, for instance, this 5-6, and it's important to note that runs can be played in ascending or descending order, so if a player were to play this run, it would beat this run. A player could also beat a run by playing a run with more cards in it, regardless of the value. So for instance, this one, two, three would beat this four, five because there are more cards in this run. A player could also beat this run by playing an identical set of cards. It's important to note that a set will always beat a run. So in this instance, these two twos would beat this four, five, even though these numbers are lower. And that's because identical sets always beat runs. 
It's important to note that a player could also play more cards in this set if they wanted to, three twos or four twos even. Once a player has an identical set on the table like these two twos, this set could either be beaten by playing a run that contains more cards, for instance this four, five, six, or a player could play an identical set with either more cards or cards of a higher value like these two threes or three ones, etc., to beat that active set. Just like normal, if an active set is beaten, then those cards would be collected and scored as points at the end of the round. If a player wants to, instead of taking a show action, they could take a scout action. Players could scout a single card if it's on the table, just taking it from the table, or if there are multiple cards, players could scout one of the cards on the edges of the active set. So for instance, a player wouldn't be able to scout this card in the middle, they would have to choose one of these two. So let's say that this player takes this card as a scout action. The owner of the active set from which the card was taken would get one scout chip and that would score them a point at the end of the round. This happens anytime someone scouts from that player's active set. So on a future turn, even if this player scouted one of these cards, this player would get a chip again. Once a player scouts a card, they're able to freely rotate and place that card wherever they want to in their hand. It's important to note that this is the only action that allows that type of hand manipulation. So in this case, this player created a consecutive set that is more powerful than the one they had by placing these three nines together. Once per round, if a player wants to, they can take a scout and show action. To do this, a player would first scout from the active set. So for instance, this player could take this card the owner of the active set would gain a chip like normal, and this player could place that card wherever they wanted to in their hand, in this instance creating a much stronger run than they currently had. They would then need to flip their scout and show token to show that they've used this ability this round, and they would immediately be able to show playing one card from their hand and claiming a card just like normal. They could also play multiple cards, a set, a run, etc. It's important to note that if a player plays an active set on their turn and the other players aren't able to show before it gets back to the active player who played that initial set, so for instance if this player were to play this run and then this player and this player had to scout on both of their turns and it made it back to this player, the player who played that initial set would end the round. A player is also able to end the round if they're able to get rid of all of their cards. At the end of the round, a player would score points for all of the cards that they've claimed in addition to all of the scout chips that they've gathered during the round, and they would lose points for any cards they have remaining in their hand. So in this instance, this player would score 10 points and lose 4 for a total of 6 that they scored during this round. It's important to note that if a player was able to end the round because their active set wasn't able to be beaten and it got back to their turn, they wouldn't lose any points for any cards remaining in their hand. Players can indicate that they scored these points by gathering the appropriate score chips in their play area. Any scout chips remaining would go back to the supply. Players would gather up all the cards, shuffle them, and deal them again, and a new round would begin. Players would also make sure to flip their scout and show marker back to the appropriate side if they've used it during this round, and then the start player marker would be passed to the next player in a clockwise direction. After playing rounds equal to the player count, the player with the most points would be the winner. And if there's a tie, the victory would be shared. All right, everybody, that was our video. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully it was helpful and hopefully it was informative. If you have any questions about how to play the game still, please comment below or email us directly at thediceyreview at gmail.com. Make sure and connect with us on social media, or you can do that by visiting our Board Game Geek Guild. And also, if you find this content helpful or useful at all, make sure and click the like button and subscribe, and click the bell icon if you want to be notified whenever I release new content. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, I'll see you at the table.